Paul here from Alpha Technologies and back in the bunker and today we've got uh, Ben Renfrey from uh, PCM and uh, Matt Kosovo um, and we're looking to do some uh, future work with him so um, just first of all Ben a little bit about uh, you and your school so what um, your school Matt Kosovo obviously based in Kosovo what's unique about your school and can you give a little bit of background about um, what your sort of focus is there? Sure the school's been in existence since about 2010 um, we we'll really hang our hat on the fact that we're international mine action training or mine action standards training specialists. So, you know, we try and uh, train all of our courses to exceed IMAS. Um, therefore, we're catering for the humanitarian mine action and the commercial industry in terms of demining training and then all the EOD levels up to advanced 3 plus. Yeah, awesome, great stuff. And, um, uh, and I know um, something that you do there that's fairly unique is you take um, you can take individual students, can't you? You can take um, people separately. But what's your um, capacity, um, sort of course capacity, uh, loading for your school? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, we we, uh, we project um, on our uh, calendar courses up to two years in advance, so mm -hmm. that people uh, in the industry, when they get time, can book on courses. And again, we schedule the courses so they meet the seasons of many of the, the more active. Uh, Middle Eastern or African uh, demining seasons. Yeah. So people can book on those at any time. Uh, also, clients can bulk book courses, so they can uh, bespoke a course with us. Okay, we'll see the program, we'll develop it, um, we'll then agree with the delivery, and the clients can be involved in the delivery. And obviously, we do the QA and QC because we certify. Um, when you're talking about capacity on courses. You know, like you, Paul, we don't like big classes. We like to have maximum uh, instructor to student ratios in terms of you know one to five max. Yeah. Um, but we can run up to, uh, run up to fifteen people on a course, and we can run two courses side by side at the facility in Kosovo, and we can do the same at the facility in Montenegro. But again, you know, too many courses running at the same time affects quality. So. You know, we're not a sausage machine. Yeah, absolutely. Right? We screen yeah. people before they arrive. We make sure that the training need fits what they need as an individual. Um, and then we cater for that. And we also do uh, conversion courses. So if we get guys from the military who are ex-EOD or high threat operators or, or search, then we'll review their CV and their certification. And depending on their competencies, will recommend if they come on an IMAS conversion course, for example, yeah, where, where they can qualify to level 3 intermediate or 3 plus advanced, depending on their military uh, qualifications. And that's really important for people leaving the military, where they might have a qualification, but there is a deficit in what they know and what's actually required in the civilian industry, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And these days, guys really do need the IMAS certificate. Yeah. But, you know, we, we, we don't try and squeeze the guys. We will give people the training they need, not the training they don't need. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, what I like about, and we've had a conversation today mm -hmm. around training, is that you, you like to maximise out time, practical training time, rather than spending all the time in the classroom, which is exactly what I like to do here, really. Um, so, also we spoke today about your facility in Montenegro. So, can you just explain to us um, what, what facilities you've got in Montenegro and how it really differs from what you've got in Kosovo? Well, you know, in Kosovo, we've got a great setup. What we don't have a lot of is live targets. Yeah. Um, and when we run all of our IMAS courses, we certify the people on live targets. So we've got live land service ammunition, live fused in Montenegro of the type that we just don't have in Kosovo. Yeah. So the facility in Montenegro gives us the opportunity to do this LSA targets on, say, a, a level three. And when we go on 3+, plus, you've also got airdrop munitions and you've got guided weapons as well that we can, uh, we can qualify the people on. Brilliant. That's, I mean, that's just quality training you can't really get anywhere else. Um, very fortunate. Very difficult. Very, very yeah. fortunate. And the reason is that that facility in Montenegro has uh, D-mill projects for people like UNDP yeah. and the likes. So, you know, there's a constant through flow of life targets that we can then train people on. Great stuff. And then really, just to um, sort of conclude today, um, we've been looking at um, our Project Yellowstone stuff specifically, specifically and um, our targets, uh, sorry, our tools. Um, what, what sort of tools interested you today that we make and, um, and how do you see um, Project Yellowstone fitting into what you're doing? 
Well, I've always admired Alfred from afar, um, and uh, now's the opportunity that we can start using uh, Alfred products at the school and all, across the you know the broad range of our courses, and including our IED, IMAS IED courses as well. So you know, very interested in the Project Yellowstone stuff, very interested in the client loaded stuff. Um, and, and also some of your, your EOD weapons, uh, disruptors and the likes. So, you know, what you have here is going to enhance what we're going to do in our training courses. And ultimately, you know, we want to work with professional people who are at the forefront of, of the development of initiative uh, and uh, concept-led approaches to, to uh, improving safety and improving efficiency. Because... You know, we've discussed this before, uh, many countries, accessibility, you know, getting your hands on um, traditional uh, demolitions kits and, and equipment is very, very difficult. Yeah. You know, we've got to be innovative, we've got to go with the, the, the course of least resistance sometimes in some of the countries yeah. where we and our clients operate, therefore they've got to have the sort of tools that they can operate, do the one shot or the multiple shots, but and again, do it safely. But it's got to be... Reliable, you know, re reliability is a massive thing. We've done a lot of research and development, test and evaluation, not on the levels you guys do. Um, and a lot of the time, you know, basic failings means that you know, people in the field, the operators, are going to lose trust in something unless it does what it says on the tin every time they go to do um, a, a spot task. Yeah, it's about uh, repeatable performance. You know, repeatable known performance, isn't it? Yeah, um, absolutely. Well, uh, thanks for the, thanks for mentioning that about our equipment, and thanks for coming today and today and talking to us. And uh, I hope to be working with you quite a lot in the future. No, it's been a pleasure. Paul, uh, this facility you've got here is amazing. Uh, I've not seen anything like this place, um, so you know we're we're delighted to be uh, cooperating. Brilliant. Thanks, Ben. Thank you very much. Cheers.